and having spread out their upper robes as a stage, they say to the dancing girl, Dance here, sister. <laughs> Buddhist Books Podcast, episode 89, uh, Tipitaka, part 28, in which I will be reciting Sangha di Sessa 13, the 13th and final formal meeting rule. Um, if this is your first time seeing me, go ahead and click here and start with Tipitaka, part 1. And you get to go into the four parajikas and then the 13 Sangha di Sessas. Okay, so for those of you who are still here, I'm going to do something fun, maybe? Now, I had this theory um, as we were starting to read the Sangha di Sessas that the 13 Sangha di Sessas kind of lined up with the four parajikas, that they were kind of like a lesser form of those four. So the four big rules, the four defeats, which are no sex, no stealing, no killing, which includes killing yourself, if I understood correctly, and no pretending to be more enlightened than you are. I don't know if I'm going to write that all out. The thing is, I haven't done this yet. I'm going to do this after, after I record. Um, so, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, so yes, the song, oh, by the way, special guests, uh, welcome to our naughty, naughty monks for, because of whom, um, many of the rules, the, the Sangha de Sessa rules were made. There is, of course, Udayin, the pervert, right? Um, and then there is, uh, Channa, the bad habit guy who also cut down a tree that was sacred to make a hut. And then there's the schismite, the schismatic monk, Devadatta. And then you might see a couple of new faces. Um, you remember the monks who were going to uh, falsely accuse Daba the Malian? So they claimed that they saw Daba the Malian having sexual intercourse with the nun Metiya. And they, they decided to name the goats that they saw having sexual intercourse, um, uh, Daba the Malian and Metia. Well, these, this is actually a sheep, but we're going to pretend it's a goat. It kind of looks like it could be a small goat, right? A little from a distance. But this is surely a goat. And as we all know, goats are pure evil. We've all seen that movie, right? No, get it off the screen. I can't stand that movie. Um, yes, so, right. Uh, so I'm going to call these um, Metia, not Metia, not the nun, but Metia and Buma Jaka, um, because they, they weren't actually the monks that were, um, that were falsely accusing Daba the Malian, but they, they were the teachers of those monks, so I'm holding them responsible. So there you have it. Those are our special guests for today. Okay, <clears throat> so getting back to it, we have uh, rule number one uh, of the formal meetings, no playing with yourself, right? No inappropriate touching, right? No verbally harassing people, women mostly, um, and uh, no like soliciting for sexual intercourse, right? So those all, those four, clearly all fall under no sex. And then there was also no matchmaking, which, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put that under the heading. Just, I don't know if this, this is just my thing. This isn't like a formal thing. So just be clear. Don't take notes on this. This is just coming out of here. It's not, it's not like a formal thing. It's just something I'm 
playing with this idea. Okay, so after those first five, we have the rules on building huts, which related to the fact that the monks were begging too much and people were like hiding from them because they were harassing them, saying, we need more of these, all these supplies so that we can build these grand huts. And so, um, uh, you know, modest-sized huts Modest size viharas was number seven, so I'm, I'm thinking maybe these can fall under no stealing, right? Um, and then rule number eight was uh, no false accusation, which, okay, this is where it gets kind of fuzzy. Falsely accusing people, uh, you know, trying to get them kicked out of the order, right? Murder? Mm, well, you know... Kind of. It's sort of a violent act. It makes someone lose their job to, uh, you know what I mean? To like get someone fired or something, get someone kicked out of the, uh, the sangha. It's kind of like murder. Maybe, maybe. Let's just play with this idea and say, sure, we'll put that under that heading. And then uh, number nine was stereotyping, which again, you remember that was when the, they, they said, uh, uh, well, you know, they were named that. They had the same name, and they were intentionally stereotyping. So he gave the example of tall people, uh, people of a certain caste, people of a certain family, people with a certain look about them, people with certain skin color, to intentionally use the fact, well, I saw someone with that skin color doing a bad thing, and he has that skin color, so I'm going to go ahead and say it was him doing it. Um, which was differentiated be from doing it accidentally. So if you actually legitimately thought you saw someone do something, then you're not guilty of a formal meeting crime. But if you're intentionally saying that you saw him when you know you didn't, then that is a formal meeting crime. So I'm just going to call that stereotyping just to, for short. Right? You remember that? This is also a good review since we're doing the last one today. Um, and then, uh, right, so number 10, no schisming. Is schisming a kind of murder? Uh, I don't, you could say it's a kind of giving birth. But um, I don't know. I'm, maybe let's put that one in between because you could say it's pretending to be more enlightened than you are, it, it, presuming to have the uh, the wisdom or the, the the je ne sais quoi or whatever to uh, to start your own order. Um, you know, one of the Buddhist monks or whatever to say, ah, no, follow me. Don't follow the Buddha. I've got it. Um, I've got the real wisdom. Follow me. Devadatta, remember this guy. So is that murder or is that um, pretending to be more enlightened than you are? Or neither, I don't know. Um, maybe it's pretending to be more enlightened than you are. Number 11 was don't follow the schism. Don't, right? Don't uh, encourage the schism. Don't be the guy starting it and don't encourage the guy starting it, right? And then uh, number 12, which we just did, was... Uh, Oh, yeah, being able to accept criticism. So I'll just write criticism. So, yeah, so we could say that, um, what's his name? Uh, this was Channa, was thinking more highly of himself than he ought, right? Um, think, don't speak to me. Don't, you know, just because I'm breaking one of, probably, you know, that one over there. Anyway, uh, I assume that's what he was doing. It said he was indulging in bad habits. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps in the original Polly, it just came out and said he was doing that. But Mr. Horner was like, oh, I don't want to write that again. Oh, my fingers. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, thinking more highly than we ought. So, I don't know. It's fuzzy. Let's, it's cluttered. Um, so... Based on all that, then maybe we can assume that this 13th one, if they fall under these four headings, might fall under that fourth heading of, uh, you know, thinking you're more enlightened than you are. Let's find out. Let's find out together, shall we? Formal meeting, Sangha di Sessa, part 13. At one time, the enlightened one, the Lord, was staying at... Savati in the Jetta Grove in Anathapindika's park. Now, at that time, unscrupulous, depraved monks who were followers of Asaji and Puna Basu. Ooh, ooh, we've got new ones. Asaji, who's Asaji? Who, who looks the most depraved here? Let's go with the pig. Asaji, right? 
got the whole the whole cast of the naughty monks and uh, this is probably he looks he looks sweet but mm, don't be fooled this is Puna Batu all right what are you guys up to they were in residence at Katagiri they indulged in the following kinds of bad habits they they planted and caused to be planted small flowering trees that's a bad habit they watered them and caused them to be watered they plucked them and caused them to be plucked they tied them up into garlands okay i can see how this could be a little problematic for monks to be going around doing and caused them to be tied up they made and caused to be made garlands having a stalk on one side they made and caused to be made garlands having a stalk on both sides. They made and caused to be made a branching flower stalk. They made and caused to be made a wreath. They made and caused to be made a garland worn round the forehead. They made and caused to be made an ear ornament. They made and caused to be made a breastplate. These monks, monks in parentheses, these monks take or send garlands having a stalk on one side to wives of reputable families. Okay, I think my whole theory is kind of bunk. It seemed at first like they started with the sex stuff. So I don't know. This doesn't seem like it's going to fall under thinking you're more enlightened than you are. Um, to daughters-in-law of reputable families, to female slaves of reputable families. They take or send garlands, having a stalk on both sides. They take or send a branching flower stalk. They take or send a wreath. They take or send a garland worn round the forehead. They take or send an ear ornament. They take or send a breastplate. They, these eat from one dish together with wives of reputable families bad habits uh, with daughters of reputable families with girls of reputable families with daughters-in-law of reputable families what if they weren't reputable families then would it be okay um, with female slaves of reputable families they drink from one beaker uh, they sit down on one seat they share one couch they share one mat. They share one coverlet. Oh. Um, they share one mat and coverlet. They eat at the wrong time. They drink intoxicants. They wear garlands. Use, in parentheses, perfumes and cosmetics. They dance and sing and play musical instruments. And they sport. No, say it ain't so. They dance when she dances. They sing when she dances. They play musical instruments when she dances. They sport when she dances. Sport? Is that? Um, they desire when she sings. Three dots. What's in the three dots? They dance when she plays musical instruments. Three more dots. I, I want to know what's in the dots. What? They dance when she sports. They sport when she sports. What is this sporting? Is it like playing ball or playing ball? You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I'm saying. They play on a checkered board for gambling. Ooh. They play on a draught on a draught board. Ah, that's like that's like an old kind of chess, I think, isn't it? They play with imagining such boards in the air. They play a game of keeping stepping on to diagrams. Alright. They play with spillikins. Uh, I'm gonna skip the footnotes. Let's just move along shall we they play at dice they play tip cat okay i've got to know i have to know what tip cat is um that's number seven they move about 
hitting a short stick with a long stick. I am so disappointed. I thought that was going to be much more interesting. That's tip cat. Right? They play brush hand. They play with a ball. They play at blowing through toy pipes made of leaves. They play with a toy plow. They play at turning somersaults. How old are these girls? They play with a toy windmill. They play with a toy measures of leaves. Mm -hmm. uh, they play with a toy cart. They play with a toy bow. They play a game of guessing at letters. Is that like Hanged Man? They play a mind reading game. Oh. They play a game of mimicking deformities. That's poor taste. They train themselves in elephant lore. They train themselves in horse lore. They train themselves in cart lore. They train themselves in archery. They train themselves in swordsmanship. Then they run in front of an elephant. They run in front of a horse. And they run in front of a chariot. Now they run backwards. Now they run forwards. And they whistle. And they snap their fingers. And they wrestle. And they fight with fists. And having spread out their upper robes as a stage, they say to the dancing girl, Dance here, sister. And they applaud and indulge in various bad habits. Mm -hmm. At one time, a certain monk, rising up from spending the rains among the people of Kasi and going to Savati for the sake of seeing the Lord, arrived at Kitagiri. Then this monk, getting up early and taking his bowl and robe, entered Kitagiri for alms food. He was pleasing whether he was approaching or departing. Whether he was looking before or looking behind, whether he was drawing in or stretching out his arm, in parentheses, in case you had any funny ideas about what he was, never mind. Um, his eyes were cast down. He was possessed of pleasant behavior. People seeing this monk spoke thus, quote, who can this be like an idiot of idiots? like a fool of fools, like a very supercilious person. Who will go up to him and give him alms? Our masters, the followers of Asali and Punabasau, these two, are polite, genteel, genial, pleasant of speech, beaming with smiles, saying, quote, come, you are welcome, and quote, they are not supercilious. They are easily accessible. They are the first to speak. End quote. Uh, Therefore, alms should not be given to these. End quote. That first end quote was a quote within quotes. Right? A certain lay follower saw that monk wandering in Katagiri for alms. Seeing that monk, he approached him. And having approached him and greeted him, he said, quote, Honored sir, are alms attainable? End quote. Quote, alms are not attainable, your reverence, end quote, he said. Quote, come, honored sir, we will go to my house, end quote. Okay, so the, the dude asked the monk, are alms attainable? The monk said, no, alms are not attainable. He said, let's go to my house. Ah. Right, well, let's see where it's going. Then the lay follower, having taken this monk to his house and made him eat, said, quote, where, honored sir, will the master go? End quote. I will go to Savati, your reverence, to see the Lord, he said. That was in quotes also. Quote, then, honored sir, in my name, salute the Lord's feet with your head and say, quote, within quotes, Lord, the residence at Katagiri has been corrupted. At Katagiri are residing unscrupul unscrupulous depraved monks who are the followers of Asaji and Punabatao. Basu, Punabasu. 
these indulge in the following bad habits. Three dots. Oh, I want to hear it again. Um, they indulge in a variety of bad habits. Lord, these men who formerly had faith and were virtuous now have no faith and are not virtuous. Those who formerly were channels for gifts to the order are now cut off. They neglect the well-behaved monks and the depraved monks stay on. So the people like the depraved monks and they don't like the... All right. It were good, Lord, if the Lord would send monks to Katagiri so that this residence in Katagiri may be settled. End quote. Very well, your reverence, said the monk, having answered and raising, rising up from his seat, departed for Savati. In due course, he approached Savati. <clears throat> the Jetta Grove and Anatta Pindika's park and said to the Lord, and having approached and greeted, and the Lord, right, he, he got to the Lord, right? Okay. And having approached and greeted the Lord, he sat down to one side. It is unusual for, in, it is usual for enlightened ones, for lords, to exchange greetings with incoming monks. So the Lord said to this monk, quote, I hope, monk, that it is going well with you. I hope that you are keeping going. I hope that you have accomplished your journey with but little fatigue. And where do you come from, monk? End quote. Quote, things go well, Lord. I am keeping going, Lord. And I, Lord, accomplished my journey with but little fatigue. Now, I, Lord, having spent the rains among the people of Kasi and coming to Savati for the sake of seeing the Lord, arrived at Katagiri. Then I, Lord, rising up early, taking my bowl and robe, entered Katagiri for alms food. Then, Lord, a certain lay follower saw me as I was approaching, as I was wandering in Katagiri for alms food. And seeing me, he approached. And having approached and greeted me, he said, quote, Are alms attainable, honored sir? End quote. Quote, no, your reverence, alms are not attainable. End quote, I said. Quote, Come, honored sir, we will go to my house, he said. End quote, he said. Then, Lord, that lay follower, taking me into his house and feeding me, said, quote, Where, honored sir, will the master go? End quote. I said, quote, Your reverence, I will go to Savati for the sake of seeing the Lord. End quote. Then he said, Three dots. You remember, right? It wasn't that long ago. Quote, May be settled. That was the last. End quote. Therefore, Lord, do I come. End quote. Those other quotes were within quotes. You know how it goes. Then the Lord, on that occasion, in that connection, having had the order of monks convened, asked the monks, quote, Monks, is it true, as is said, that the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu, residing in Kitagiri, are unscrupulous and depraved and indulge in the following bad habits. They plant small flowering trees, three dots, indulge in a variety of bad habits, three dots, and they, then those monks, those men, monks, dot, space, dot, and the depraved monks stay on. Right, yeah, so they get used to the monks giving garlands and then the regular monks, they're like, eh. <laughs> Give me the monks that like to play games and wrestle. Right. It is true, Lord, they said. The enlightened one, the Lord, rebuked them, saying, quote, How, monks, can these foolish men indulge in this kind of bad habit? How can they plant small flowering trees or cause them to be planted? How can they water them or cause them to be watered? How can they pluck them or cause them to be plucked? How can they tie up garlands or cause them to be tied up? How can they make or cause to be made three dots? How do you make three dots? Boop, boop, boop. How can they take or send three dots? How can they eat two dots? How can they drink three dots, sit three dots, stand three dots, eat three dots, drink three dots, run three dots? Thank you. Oh, keep going. Don't stop. Never stop. Oh, he stopped. Um, dance and sing and play musical instruments and sport, not spurt, sport, three dots, 
play three dots, train themselves three dots, run three dots, run around facing three dots? How can they whistle and snap their fingers and wrestle and fight with fists and having spread out their upper robes as a stage, say to a notch girl, N-A-U-T-C-H, girl, dance here, sister, and applaud and indulge in a variety of bad habits. It is not, monks, for the benefit of unbelievers. Three dots. It is to the detriment of both believers and unbelievers, and it causes wavering in some. <clears throat> and having rebuked them and given them talk on Dhamma, he addressed Shariputra and Mogalana. You remember them? Shariputra and Mogalana. Well, we'll just visualize them. They're good. Right? Ni hao Shariputra. Ni Shariputra Sarvadama We'll get to the Heart Sutra later. Um, you go, Shariputra and Mogalana. Mogalana was the one that was the great who had the visions coming down from Vulture Peak of the stabbing, stab, stabby, stab, stab. Anyway, uh, and having gone to, but it was real. He wasn't pretending. So he was, they were like, he's pretending to be, no, he's not, it's real. All right. And having gone to Kitagiri, make an act of banishment from Katagiri against those monks who are followers of Asaji and Puna Basu. These are fellow monks of yours. End quote. They said, quote, Lord, how can we make an act of banishment from Kitagiri against the monks who are followers of Asaji and Puna Basu? These monks are violent and rough. Ooh. Okay. End quote. Quote, then Shariputra and Mogalana go together with many monks. A little army, huh? And quote, very well, Lord, Shariputra and Mogalana answered the Lord. Many monks to help fight. See, it's like a, a karate, karate monk. Quote, and this, monks, is how it should be done. First, the monks who are followers of Asaji and Puna Basau should be reproved. Having been reproved, they should be reminded. Having been reminded, they should be accused of the offense. Having been accused of the offense, the order should be informed through an experienced, competent monk. Quote, within quotes, Let the order listen to me, honored sirs. These monks who are followers of Asaji and Puna Basau are those who bring a family into disrepute, and they are of evil conduct. Their evil conduct is seen and also heard, and respectable families corrupted by them are seen and also heard. If it seems the right time for the order, let the order make an act of banishment from Kitagiri against the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu, so that the monks who are the followers of Asaji and Punabasu may not be in Kitagiri. Restraining order. This is the motion. Let the order listen to me, honored sirs. These monks who are, three dots, seen and also heard, the order issues an act of banishment from Kitagiri against the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu so that the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu may not be in Kitagiri. If it seems good to the venerable ones to make an act of banishment from Kitagiri against the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu, so that the monks who are the followers of Asaji and Punabasu may not be in Kitagiri, then be silent. If it does not seem good to you, in parentheses, then you should speak. A second time I speak forth this matter, three dots. And a third time do I speak forth this matter, let the order listen to me, three dots, should speak. By the order there has been made an act of banishment from Kitagiri against the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu so that the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu may not be in Kitagiri. If it seems good to the order, then be silent, 
so do I understand. Then, Shariputra, so that was all in quotes, that was Buddha telling them what to say. All right. Then, Shariputra and Moggallana, at the head of a company of monks, having gone to Kitagiri, made an act of banishment from Kitagiri against the monks who were followers of Asaji and Punabasu. So that the monks who were followers of Asaji and Punabasu might not be in Kitagiri. The act of banishment having been made by the order, these did not conduct themselves properly, nor did they become subdued, nor did they mend their ways. They did not ask the monks for forgiveness. They cursed them. They reviled them. They offended by following a wrong course through desire, by following a wrong course through hatred, by following a wrong course through stupidity by following a wrong course through fear. And they went away, and they left the order. Those who were modest monks became angry, three dawns, and annoyed and said, quote, How can the monks who are followers of Asaji and Punabasu, banished by the order, not conduct themselves properly, not become subdued, not mend their ways? Why do they not ask for, for forgiveness from the monks? Why do they curse and revile them? Why do they, following a wrong course through desire, hatred, stupidity, and fear, go away and leave the order? And, quote, then these monks told this matter to the Lord. He asked, quote, is it true, as is said, monks, that the monks who are the followers of Asaji and Punabasu, having been banished by the order, do not conduct themselves properly? Three dots, leave the order. It is true, Lord, they said. The enlightened one, the Lord, rebuked them, saying, three dots, quote, And thus, monks, this course of training should be set forth. If a monk lives depending on a certain village or little town, and is one who brings a family into dis disrepute, and is of depraved conduct, and if his evil conduct is seen and heard, and families corrupted by him are seen and also heard. Let that monk be spoken to thus by the monks. Quote, the venerable one is one who brings families into disrepute and is of depraved conduct. The venerable one's depraved doings are seen and heard, and families corrupted by the venerable one are seen and also heard. Let the venerable one depart from this residence. You have lived here long enough. End quote. And if this monk, having been spoken to thus by the monks, should say to these monks, quote, The monks are followers of desire, and the monks are followers of hatred, and the monks are followers of stupidity, and the monks are followers of fear. They banish some for an, an offense, they do not banish others. End quote. This monk should be spoken to thus by the monks, quote, Venerable one, do not speak thus. The monks are not followers of desire, and the monks are not followers of hatred, and the monks are not followers of stupidity, and the monks are not followers of fear. The venerable one is one who brings families into disrepute and is of depraved conduct. The, depra the depraved doings of the venerable one are seen and heard, and families corrupted by the venerable one are seen and also heard. Let the venerable one depart from this residence. Let the venerable one has the venerable one has dwelt in this residence long enough. End quote within quotes. If this monk, when spoken to thus by the monks, should persist as before, that monk should be admonished up to three times by the monks for giving up his course. If after being admonished up to three times he gives up that course, it is good. If he does not give it up, it is an offense entailing a formal meeting of the order. A monk is dependent on, in parentheses, a certain village or a little town means a village and a little town and a city and thus a village and a little town. The thing being defined was more clear than the definition. I don't mean to criticize the sacred text Li lives depending on means there they are dependent for the requisites of robes alms food lodgings and medicine for the sick 
A family means... There are four kinds of families these days, sir. There are more than four. But, oh no, I see what he's saying. A noble family, a Brahmin family, a merchant family, a low caste family. So is, is he lumping in, um, maybe noble means uh, warrior? And servant and untouchables are both low caste? Last time I checked, there were five main caste categories. Anyway, one who brings a family into disrepute means he brings families into disrepute by means of a flower or a fruit or with chaunam or clay or with a toothpick or with bamboo or with medicinal treatment or with going messages on foot. Right. Uh, of depraved conduct means he plants or causes to be planted a little flowering tree. He waters it and causes it to be watered. He plucks it and causes it to be plucked. He ties up garlands and causes them to be tied up. Are seen and also heard means those who are face to face with them see. Those who are absent hear. Uh, they hear about it from hearsay, as it were. No, from people. Families corrupted by him means formerly they had faith. Now, thanks to him, they are without faith. Having been virtuous, they are now without virtue. Are seen and also heard means those who are face to face with them see, those who are absent hear. That monk means that monk who brings a family into disrepute. By the monks means by other monks. These see, these hear, it should be said by these, quote within quotes, the venerable one is one who brings families into disrepute and is of depraved conduct. The venerable one's depraved conduct, three dots, has lived here long enough, end quote within quotes. And if the monk being spoken to thus by the monks should say, quote within quotes, three dots, should say what? Uh, they do not banish others, oh that. And quote, this monk means this monk against whom proceedings have been taken. By the monks means by other monks. S these see, these hear. It should be said by these, quote, do not, venerable one, speak thus. Three dots. The venerable one has lived here long enough. End quote. Within quotes. A second time they should say three dots. A third time they should say three dots. If he gives up the course, that is good. If he does not give it up, it is an offense of wrongdoing. If, having heard, they do not speak, there is an offense of wrongdoing. That monk, having been drawn into the middle of the order, should be told, Do not, venerable one, speak thus. Three dots. You have lived here long enough. End quote. A second time he should be told, three dots. A third time he should be told, three dots. If he gives up his course, it is good. <clears throat> but if he does not give it up, there is an offense of wrongdoing. That monk should be admonished. The order should be informed through an experienced, competent monk. Quote, let the order listen to me, honored sirs. This monk so-and-so, banished by an act of the order, makes the monks fall into wrong courses by following desire, by following hatred, by following confusion, by following fear. And he does not give up his course. If it seems the right time to the order, let the order admonish this monk for the sake of giving up his course. This is the motion. Let the order listen to me. Three dots. Uh, stay silent if you want to vote in favor of admonishing him. Otherwise, talk. And uh, thus do I understand. I was filling in the three dots for you. <clears throat> According to the motion, there is an offense of wrongdoing. Three dots. Grave offenses subside. You remember from last time? So if, uh, if they go through that whole thing and uh, it's a formal meeting... Um, and then the grave offense and the, and the lesser offenses, the wrongdoings, all subside as just a formal meeting. So you're not accused of a high felony as well as a regular felony and three misdemeanors. But if you repent partway through, then you're guilty of a wrongdoing or three wrongdoings, depending on at what point in that whole process you repented. Okay. An offense entailing a formal meeting of the order means... You remember, right? Um... I'll go ahead and read it. He, he put it in. I don't know why Mr. Horner decided. Let's bring it back. The order places him on probation on account of his offense. It sends him back to the beginning. 
It inflicts the manata discipline. It rehabilitates. It is not many people. It is not one man. It is not many people. It is not one man. Therefore, it is called an offense which in the earlier as well as the later stages requires a formal meeting of the order. I think it was more clear the first time. I think there's a typo in there. A synonym for this class of offense is a work. Therefore, again, it is called an offense which is the earlier as well, which in the earlier as well as the later stages entails a formal meeting of the order, end quote. Thinking a legally valid act to be a legally valid act, he does not give it up. There is an offense entailing a formal meeting of the order. Being in doubt as to whether it is a legally valid act, three dots, remember all that? Not thinking an act which is legally valid to be an act which is not legally valid, it is an offense of wrongdoing, even though that doesn't make sense. All right. It is not an offense if he is not admonished, if he gives up, if he gives it up, if he is mad, if he is a beginner. Told is the 13th offense entailing a formal meeting of the order. <clears throat> that of bringing families into disrepute. The 13 matters which require a formal meeting of the order have been set down, venerable one. Nine, which become offenses at once. Four, which are not completed until the third admonition. If a monk offends against one or other of these for as many days as he knowingly conceals his offense, for so many days should probation be spent by this monk, even against his will. When this monk has spent his probation, a further six days are to be allotted for the monk's manata discipline. Maybe we'll hear about that later. The company of monks numbers 20. That monk may be rehabilitated. But if the order of monks should rehabilitate that monk when numbering less than 20, even by one, that monk is not rehabilitated until these monks are blameworthy. Oh, that monk is not rehabilitated and these monks are blameworthy. Okay. This is the proper course there. Now I ask the venerable ones. I hope that you are pure in this matter. A second time I, ma I ask, I hope that you are pure in this matter. A third time I ask, I hope that you are pure in this matter. The venerable ones are pure in this matter. Therefore, they are silent. Thus do I understand. Told are the 13. The summary of this is emission and bodily contact, lewd talk, and one's own pleasure, acting as a go-between and, and a hut and a vihara without foundation, and, and some point and a schism, even siding in with difficult to speak to, and bringing a family into disrepute. These are the 13 offenses entailing a formal meeting of the order. Told are the 13 sections. We have finished Sangha di Sessa. All right. Now we've got the uh, the four parajikas and the uh, 13 sanghadisesas. Their names for them were a little different than mine. Hopefully you saw some fun stuff up here while that was happening. Special thanks to the naughty ones and the muscle, you know, to back up Shariputra and Mogalana. Right. All right, so next time we will begin with something. I don't know. I like to be surprised, so I haven't looked ahead. I don't know what the name of that section is going to be. I assume that it's grave offenses, but something tells me maybe it's not. We'll find out together on in episode 90 of Edward Reeves' Buddhist Books Podcast. Thank you all for going on this ride with me, as always. I shall close.
to the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, to the spirits of light among us, and to the spirits below, we send out our reverent love and compassion. May all beings be happy. May all beings be serene. May all beings be in peace. Until next time.